without a doubt, practicing English is always best with another person who speaks English. However, that's not always possible. So today I'm going to show you five techniques for practicing your English without another person who speaks English. So let's get started. First technique I have for you for today is describing things in your head. So when you're sitting at a cafe or at home or at your workplace, you can always practice English by simply describing your surroundings mentally or if you're brave enough, verbally. But it has to be in English. The benefit of doing this is it practices your ability to think in English. Therefore, that leads to being able to be more fluent in English and faster in your sentence structure. So an example of this could be simply when you're sitting in your bedroom, you could describe your bedroom. So it has four walls, one door, the walls are white, there is one bed, one desk, and is it messy? Is it clean? You can start like this. It's very basic, but as you get better at this and faster and more accurate, you can take it up a notch. So you could start describing people, animals, things, and then you can eventually start describing situations like what happened to you today at work or what happened on the weekend. Technique two is shadowing. Shadowing is pretty much when you're listening to somebody else speaking English, you are following along at the same time, saying exactly what they are saying. So you are copying their words, you're copying their tone, you're copying their accent and pronunciation. This is very, very beneficial for enhancing your pronunciation. And if you're, and if you want to adopt another accent. If you want to get used to other accents, this is also good for that as well. Technique three is summarizing. So it's similar to shadowing, but instead of following along, you're pretty much just listening. And once the person has finished speaking, you will either write down or even say what they have said. It doesn't have to be exact, but the main point here is being able to understand what people are saying. So this technique allows you to check afterwards if you have actually understood what you have listened to. So pretty much the benefit here is listening. It enhances your listening ability. Now technique four is of course reading. This one is important to keep fun. So if you're not reading things that you're really interested in, it might not be so beneficial. So please try to find something that you are interested in and read that. Once you have found something you are interested in, reading will definitely uncover some words that you're not familiar with. Once you pinpoint these words, that you don't know of, you can then research them and find the meaning of them. Usually this is good because you're reading things that you're interested in and these words will be very beneficial to you when you want to pretty much have a conversation about your interests. So you will have more vocabulary with you. Now the last technique I have for you for today is teaching English. So it doesn't matter if you're an intermediate or beginner English learner, you can still teach what you know to somebody who doesn't know English. It could be a family member of yours or a friend. And pretty much you can start off with basic things like vocabulary, phrases, idioms. And once you see that another person is benefit benefiting from your knowledge, you will gain confidence. So definitely the benefit of this technique is it will enhance your confidence in your English abilities. Thank you for listening to me today and see you next time.